Hi, this is Fabi Martinez, and I'm going to talk a little bit, or a lot, maybe, we'll see how long this goes, about the AccuStitch program and the improvements that it has now that Janome has re-released it. So I'm not going to start there, though. Where I am actually going to start is here in Horizon Link Suite with the Embroidery Link Tool. And the reason why I'm doing that is because many people are not even aware of the fact that we already had a similar version of AccuStitch here in the Embroidery Link Tool. And what I'm talking about here is the Convert STX section. So what the Convert STX section is of our Embroidery Link Tool is a place where we can take the decorative stitches that have been created for us um, by Janome as STX files or that we have created for ourselves using the Stitch Composer program. So what an STX file is, is it is a decorative stitch file that is meant to be used on the sewing side of our sewing slash embroidery machines. So what this has done for us is it is giving us the opportunity to use those decorative stitches and to then turn them into embroidery files or converting them into embroidery files. Now there is another little thing here in the Embroidery Link tool that is very similar to converting STX files and I'm going to talk about it briefly. It's in the monogram section. So in monogram section you know that we've got a variety of different uh, embroidery fonts for lettering and numbers that were built into our sewing, into our embroidery machine. And down at the end of the toolbar here we've also got these two categories for border and normal sew stitches. So what these are is they are lettering objects, but they're not letters. They are decorative stitch motifs. So in the border category, we've got lots of different little embroidery designs that can be used to create borders and semicircles and all kinds of uh, little additions to our embroidery designs that we're working at on either in our sewing machine or here directly in Horizon Link Suite. Now, the normal sew stitches are very similar. These ones, however, are based upon some of the decorative stitches that we also have on our 15,000 sewing machine. So when you browse through these, you will see some of them that look very familiar to you. Again, they are being treated here as lettering objects, and um, therefore there's going to be a couple of functions that are available in the program that we are going to be able to use with these types of designs. So I'm just going to pick this little scrolled leaf flower here and I'm just going to click it maybe about four or five times. You can see that it's populating up here in the toolbar and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say enter and now it has been popped into the middle of my screen for my embroidery design. I'm going to close this tab and I'm just going to show you some of the things that we can do with this. So I'm going to move my design list out of the way for a section second so I can close out that screen. You can move this around wherever you like it, but I generally like to keep it over on the right hand side. All right, so I've got a green boundary box around it to show that I have it selected. When I come to the edit tab here, I'm going to be able to use this arrange text toolbox, which means that I can arc this design to make it into a curved line. I can space it out to make it a little bit closer together by clicking on it, or I can space them out a little bit more by making it a looser tension. I can create it as a arc that goes in the opposite direction just by clicking it and doing some various things to it. All right, so that is how border and normal sew stitches work. And the way that they are actually going to differ from the convert STX files is converting STX is like I said before we're going to be using decorative stitches and we're going to have two different functions here we can either create lines or circles or parts of circles alright so if I select the line tool uh, I just want to mention to you first of all that when you first open up this selection box it's going to default to the last place that you were at when you were working with this program so if you've never worked with this program before, where this is going to take you is into your PC and probably you're going to be in your C drive, in your Horizon Link Suite program, and in the sample stitches. That's probably what would be if you were to be clicking around here and going up and down in the levels, that's where you would probably be. All right, so in this decorative stitch section, 
that's built into the program. I just ought to double check and make sure that's where I'm at. Actually, yeah, I'm in Horizon Link Suite. So let's go back to Decorative Stitches. We are going to open it up. And you know, these little squiggly things don't look like much here. So for some reason, my screen isn't showing the whole thing, but you'd have to select your little preview window here. And when you select a stitch, you get a little pixelated image of what that stitch actually looks like. So let's just say, for example, that we're going to pick out um, maybe this little tulip. It's decorative stitch number six. Also want to mention that it's called number six here, but probably not on your sewing machine. These are just numbered according to this program. So don't expect these numbers to coordinate with the number on your sewing machine. Just want to mention that. So let's open it up. And when we do that, we get this little working window here where we're going to be able to do some things to make our design like we want it to be. So first of all, total pattern length. Right now, this pattern length is 10 millimeters long. That's how long this decorative stitch is. The width right now is set for 100%. So that's how wide this stitch is, is right here, like up in this direction where you see my arrow moving. If I wanted to say that I wanted my decorative uh, my whole pattern to be, let's just say more or less about four inches long. I could type on my keyboard here 100 millimeters and I end up with a line that's 100 millimeters long. It's got what about eight little repeats of this pattern. Another way I could change that pattern line is I could choose to have it be a vertical line or I could have it come in as a horizontal line. I could change the number of cycles. So instead of eight patterns, how about if I say I only want three patterns? All right, and that's one way that I could have that pop in there in the screen. Another thing that I could do here is come back again to the total pattern length. And this time what I'm gonna do is take it back up to 100 millimeters. And I'm gonna have you pay attention to a couple of different things here. The space size. This is how much space is going to be in between each one of the motifs. Right now it's defaulting at 2.5. But if I said, for example, that I wanted this to be, let's just even say four, you might not have noticed too much of a difference on the screen, but I guarantee it did change it. I changed it from the two to a four, and let's convert that and pop that in the screen. In a little while, we will separate these all out. I can't move them while this window is open. I get that little warning message with a sound that says that I can't move things. So let's change another space size down to Let's go back down to two. And this time, let's convert it again. And so we're popping things on top of each other over here, all right? Another thing we can do is we can change the baseline. Now what the baseline is, I'm gonna actually make this less, I'll put four of them here, so maybe this will show up a little bit better. No, I don't want that, I want four. All right, so the baseline, this is the green line that you see right here. Right now it's set in the left position and the design is sitting right on top of that green line. The reason why is because remember, this is a decorative stitch and as such, when this is in a sewing machine, this is a stitch that comes in in the left needle position. So if this was stitching, it would be stitching on your sewing machine from left toward the right and this would be the left needle position. If I change the baseline to center, you're gonna see that it has now positioned the tulips centered along that green line. If I select it in the right baseline position, it has dropped those tulips down to underneath that baseline. The reason why this is important is it's also gonna work the same when we're over in the AccuStitch program, but you can actually change the size of your overall design just based on which baseline you choose to use here. So let's come back up to a left position. Let's convert it. Let's do another one in the right position and let's convert it and let's close these. So we've got a bunch of stuff over here in my design list. Let's just start moving some things apart. All right, let's look at that one. That was the first one that we made. So let's put her up at the top just so that we can see some things that are, how things have differed a little bit just by using that same little tulip design changing baselines, changing the amount of motifs, changing spacing in between some of these, and um, 
you know, so these ones right here are the ones where the baselines had changed and, you know, they don't look much different now that I've separated them apart, unfortunately, but you can see that we've got some different things that have happened with our designs here. Some are gonna be more obvious than others. I probably shouldn't have split those apart, come to think of it, to demonstrate that properly. But I'm sure you get the drift of what I'm talking about, right? Back to Convert STX, and this time let's take a look at the Circle tool. Again, we're back in our Decorative Stitch category, and let's just pick, uh, let's pick this little vine, and we can say Open, and what we've got going on on the screen right now is if I zoom in on it just a little bit, you're gonna see that I've got a circle, but if you look closely out here, I'm gonna try to zoom in on it. Where am I at? You're gonna notice here that the circle isn't completely closed up. And you know, there's a couple of different things that we can do here. For example, we can change the radius. And remember the radius is the from the center point of your circle to the outer edge of it. That's what the dimension of a radius is, half of the diameter in other words. So let's make our radius on this Let's make it 20 millimeters. And when I did that, you can see that the space is even bigger. So we don't have a nice join there, but we can get a nice join on most of our decorative stitches just by playing around a little bit with pattern lengths and maybe even with the base lines here. So let's say with the pattern length here, you know, even just by changing the pattern length a little bit, you know, maybe that would do it for me. Maybe it won't. I could also change the, let's see if I can get it up to a little bit bigger. You know, play with it a little bit. Some will do better than others. So I got it to join up quite successfully here. Looks pretty much evenly spaced out around the, di the, um, the circumference of the circle pretty well. And by doing it at about 83% with this particular stitch. Again, you know, playing with some baseline changes. I've made it a bigger circle. Made it a little bit smaller made it even smaller. So, you know, we've got some, some different things that can happen here with these stitches. So let's close it. We can zoom in on here by looking at our view tab and just clicking to zoom in, you know, and just taking a look at some of those different things that happen there. All right, so play around with those. One other thing you can do on the circle tool on this one that I'll just briefly touch on is, let's pick a stitch that is, oh, I don't know, it doesn't even really matter. Let's open up the tool up again, because it's handy. If I didn't want a complete circle, I could also do partial circles by just adjusting this stitch angle. So if I wanted a half circle, of course my radius is pretty small, so let's make it a, oh, let's say, 130 half circle. Let's zoom out so we can. Oh, it's not going to let me zoom out to see it. There it is, way up there at the top. That's a really big half circle. But anyway, let's go ahead and open that up. Too big for my hoop. Oh dear. Okay, so let's do this. My radius, too big. Let's go 460. What does it look like on the screen? Nice little half circle. Let's change that angle to something maybe even a little less. See, so just by typing in what you want for your angles, you can get some nice curved shapes here with some of these uh, Convert STX files here. All right, so I just wanted to demonstrate those few things to you here before we pop on over into, into our AccuStitch program. So play around with this. You know, if you never have before or if you don't plan to purchase the AccuStitch program, there is still a lot of fun things you can do in the Horizon Link Suite program. So we'll minimize that one and we will open AccuStitch. This is what it looks like. Back on the Home tab, it's very similar in some of its features to what we have over in the Embroidery Link tool. I'm gonna draw your attention, first of all, up to the application button in the upper left-hand corner all of the Janome programs have this button here where we're gonna have the opportunity to open a new file, to save things, and all of that kind of stuff. This program here also has a few things that we don't have in our Embroidery Edit or the Horizon Link program. And the first one is, is we've got this button for the model selection. So when we click on that and we hit the little downward arrow, these are all of the sewing machines that Janome has made where we are able to use 
these um, AccuStitch program to create designs for. So everything all the way back to the MC400E, which was some of these embroidery only machines, some of the more recent sewing and embroidery models. So first of all, select your model for the project that you are currently going to be working on. And then you would select your hoop size for what you want. I generally start with a pretty big hoop, either the 23 or the GR when I'm working on my Janome 15,000 machine. And that's just so that I have plenty of space to work with. You know, and let's just say, for example, that I end up making a design that actually is going to stitch out better in the RE18 hoop or maybe in the square 14. I could then switch my hoop back to the proper size for the design that I have here. So it's not written in blood what hoop size you choose here in the beginning. On the tool tab here, we've got an edit toolbar, which is very similar to what we're familiar with before. There's one major difference here, and that is that now we've got an align tool. Nothing's going to work here. It's all grayed out right now, and that's because I don't have anything on my screen to work with. But this can really come in handy, and it's, it's a nice improvement, I must say. In the View tab, we've also got one other major difference. This program doesn't give us a stitch simulator like we have over in Embroidery Link. So, um, you know, that's a little bit of a, a disappointment because you might work really hard on creating a design for your hoop here. And what might end up happening is that you're not going to get to see it stitch out as in a simulation. So possibly what you would need to do is save it here once you've created a design, save it here as a Jeff Plus. Remember, a Jeff Plus is going to keep all those different little elements as separate elements. And then what you can do is open it up over in the Horizon Link Suite program. And you can use the stitch simulator over there to make sure that you like the way that the design is stitching. And if there are things in it that you just don't like uh, that might need to be changed, maybe you can do it over there in Horizon Link, or you could possibly open it up back again here in AccuStitch after having watched that stitch simulator and make the changes that you need to make. A little bit difficult to describe that. Um, because I don't have anything on the screen to demonstrate it right now, but just notice that on the View tab, you do not have a stitch simulator anymore. You do have all the same other things, zooming in, zooming out, fitting your hoop in the window, showing and hiding some of these things that are useful tools. The design list is this little block over here that usually sits on the right side of the screen. However, it is something that you can drag around and move it wherever you might like it to be. Um, you also have the center line. Now the center line is that line that's the vertical and horizontal uh, crosshair. You also have a status bar and that is this down here at the bottom where you have the information about what hoop size you have, how big your design is as you start to put designs in here, um, or when you even select them over in the design list, how many stitches, how many colors, and which machine you have selected. So that's nothing new. I don't believe. You can choose your background color just like you could over in Horizon Link Suite. You know, pick your favorite color or pick a fabric maybe that is similar to what you might be uh, trying to do an embroidery project on. And your grid size. You know, you can always change this to suit your own preferences. The grid size of 10 can be changed, but the 10 is the default um, size in the program as well as the size that is printed on your plastic grid for your embroidery hoops. So if you don't want any grid showing, you don't have to have a grid. You can even turn off everything by turning off the center line and the grid. I generally like to keep these things on, but sometimes I turn them off. It just kind of depends on what I'm working on. You know, solid lines as compared to dotted lines. Again, your own preference. All right, so let's go back to the home tab and let's take a look at some of the features here. Let's go back up to the applications button because there's two things here that we didn't have in the other program. And this first one is the stitch reference chart. When we click on that, we've got a PDF document of all of the decorative stitches that are included in this program. And there are more of them here than there are over in the Convert STX uh, of Horizon Link Suite. What I want to make sure that everyone also understands is that if you've ever created any STX files in Stitch Composer, they will also be available in these two programs. The other thing is that, let's say for example, that you are in the Horizon Link Suite Convert STX mode. 
for some reason, you can always navigate over to these stitches as well that are stored in the AccuStitch program if you want to use some of these stitches over in the Convert STX section. So it's pretty handy. While we're here looking at this, I'm going to draw your attention to a couple of stitches that are in this applique section that I'm really happy about. And that is number six, seven, and eight. Six is a straight stitch and it's in the center needle position. Number seven is a straight stitch and it's in the right needle position. And number eight is a zigzag stitch. And this is really handy. It's in the right needle position, but by adjusting the width and the length of this stitch, you can create some really nice satin stitch lines. So these three stitches are really um, designs that could be very useful in creating, you know, embroidered borders and different things like that. Think creatively about your decorative stitches. And again, all of these stitches are stitches that are already in your sewing machine. Let's minimize that and let's look at the other reference chart. It's this one here called the template data reference chart. So this is a totally new thing in the AccuStitch program. What we've got here are some designs that are built in that are kind of like motifs, but they are also uh, bigger designs. You can see that the categories here are ruler work, miscellaneous shapes, and we've got an alphabet and we've got some numbers here that can be used to create um, decorative effects in our embroidery designs. I have to tell you that I haven't really worked much with these yet, so I'm not going to talk about them any further, but just know that they're there. Here is the reference chart for them. And let's close that. Let's minimize that. And this digital ruler work is where you're going to find those designs. All right, it's going to open up here, and you could open them here. You could assign a decorative stitch to it if you want to. So let's open it up. Here's that little heart shape. We could convert it and close it, and there it is. So that's kind of how those things work. And like I said, I haven't really played around with that much more than just what I did right there for you. But it is some interesting things, I think, that could be um, created here. And you know what's interesting about it is I have to say this because I just thought this just occurred to me, actually. A heart shape is not one of the shapes that's available here when we look at our all of our different shapes that are included in AccuStitch. But here it is as a heart shape, an embroidered heart, that we can create using the digital ruler work. And I just think that that's fantastic and there's some really great possibilities here with, with what we can do in this program. Again, some incredible fun things. You could play for hours here. All right, so let's take a look at one of my favorite new things that the new improved AccuStitch has. And that is, we've now got a rectangle tool, and we now have um, a couple of other triangles and some different things in here. Some of them that are here were original to the program, and some of them are uh, improved versions, I should say. So we always had the ability to do tapered lines, and that was always a lot of fun to do, but um, now one of the things that I think is really great was that if I wanted a rectangle back in the old program, I had to make four different tapered lines. I had to have two that were long and two that were short. And I had to use this tapered end here in order to make my own rectangle. But now they so graciously gave us a rectangle and I'm just ever so happy, I just have to tell you. Thrilled to death. And so what happens again in this program, just like over in Horizon Link Suite, the last place that we were at is the first place that's going to open in our little tab here. So I am in the heirloom stitches. We do have some things that we can look at here. Um, and I think that what I'm first of all going to create actually probably will be something over in decorative stitches. You know, a little while ago, I, you know, we were looking at... Um, some designs that were available over in the other program. And this is one that I'm going to use now, which is the tulip. And the reason why I'm going to demonstrate that one actually is because it's a very directional stitch and it's going to give us a good opportunity to demonstrate a couple of different things in this program. So when we convert this STX tulip into a rectangle shape, you're going to see here on the screen that it is 80 millimeters wide and it is 40 millimeters tall. 
All right, so that's just the default here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it and just pop it over into the middle of my screen. There it is. All right, we'll just stay over here for now. And what the next thing that I'm going to do with it is I'm going to turn on the advanced settings. So we also had advanced settings over in the Convert STX in Horizon Link Suite, but over here we've also got it, and it has another additional feature called the Invert. All right, so what the Invert is going to do for us is it will allow us, let's do this first of all, I'm gonna make a new rectangle, and then I'll explain Invert. So the width, instead of it being 80, I'm going to make this one 90, and instead of 40, I'm going to make it 50. All right, so I've created a slightly bigger uh, tulip border. And what I'm going to do with it this time is I'm going to hit the Invert button, and I'm going to have a couple of choices here. So what I'm going to do is select the width, because if I do the length, you're not really going to notice much of a difference there. But with the Width button, you will notice that it has flipped my mirror image, my little tulip. And I'm going to say OK. I'm going to convert it. And I probably should have made it a little bit bigger than that one. How about if instead of 90, I make it 95? I'm experimenting, and remember I was warning you earlier in the video that a lot of what we do here is going to be a, a experiment. We don't need to change the length, we'll just do the width. Let's convert that one, and let's get rid of, let's close the window, and let's get rid of that middle one there. So what you're gonna see here is if I zoom in You can see that I've made myself kind of an interesting little border there using that little tulip. Let's get rid of the heart. And see how nice that looks? It really is pretty neat, isn't it? Yeah, so that's one a nice improvement over here. I want to draw your attention also to the way that the program has created the corners of this decorative stitch here to create these really nice tapered stitch um, mitered corners. It's very nice. So you can see the possibilities with some of these shapes already right let's come back to our home tab and let's see what else we might want to create in here how about if we select uh, let's see what could we do one of the other ones I'm real excited about is the what they call the ellipse I call it an oval basically it is a rounded shape right that does not have equal dimension all around like a circle does. So let's pick, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna pick an heirloom stitch. Yeah, we'll pick an heirloom stitch. Let's pick that one, number three. All right, so we've got ourselves a nice little oval here. Let's make it, instead of 60 millimeters wide, let's go ahead and make it 100 millimeters wide. And let's make the height 60. All right. Well, how about if we do this? Let's do it a little bit in the other direction. Let's make it 100 high by 60 wide. All right. So that's a nice little pattern there. Again, let's go ahead and let's select our advanced setting and let's keep our baseline this time mm, on the right. Let's convert it. You can see that it populated back there in the background. Let's make another one with the baseline here. Already you can see that it's quite a bit smaller. Let's convert it. And I'm going to go ahead and close this window. I'm gonna move these two out of the way so they don't interfere with what we're looking at here. But can you see how I made that same stitch just changing the baseline on it and I have created this really nice wide border that I then might want to put some uh, create that maybe around an embroidery design of some sort or you know you can just use your imagination here one of the things that also that makes a really nice little doodad kind of a shape that I just experimented with a while ago was using this triangle tool and I don't remember. There's a lot of different stitches that we could stitch here too. Let's just even use this one here again, number three. Let's open it up. And what I've got here on the screen is this little equilateral triangle that has just populated itself right here. It's 30 millimeters. I'm gonna make it 40 just to make it a little bit bigger. 
Now I'm going to go back to 35. Oop, got to be careful what you type in here. Won't let you do anything wrong. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to convert that into a stitch. And what I'm next going to do, I think, is I'll keep that same stitch, but this time I'm going to make the width of it, let's say, 50. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. I'm just experimenting, remember, so have patience with what I'm doing. Uh, let's go with 50 and let's convert it. Not that wasn't quite big enough. I just saw how it populated there. Not bad, actually, but not exactly what I wanted. Let me go up to 65. Yeah, let's just play with that one a little bit. Let's get rid of... And again, actually, you know, that's not a bad-looking thing. It's actually a really pretty decorative stitch thing. So this was the one I'm going to get rid of. Let's use our little alignment tool over here that we've got in the middle of our in our uh, edit mode here. So let's select these two designs and let's align them. Let's align the center. Okay, and then I'm going to actually I'm going to move these off to the side a little bit. I don't know that much changed actually when I did that. So, you know, and like I said a while ago, I was just actually playing with sizes and I wasn't like being very technical about it or anything. But let's see, see that's kind of a nice looking design that I just made there. I'm going to change the colors on some of these so that we've got a little bit different looks. So I've got a red border, pretty nice, and I've got a black center. Or how about if I make that center uh, green? Okay, well, I think I changed the same color two times. So what I've got now is this cute little design. I think it looks pretty neat. Again, take notice of these really pretty tapered or mitered corners that it's got. It's really nice looking. And I'm gonna actually delete my tulip because I demonstrated how to invert some stitches. Let's put this together. What am I going to do? Will it let me rotate them together? Nope, it's not going to. I'm going to rotate each one of these. Actually, I kind of like just where it's at. Plain, again, once again, I'm just plain. And what I'm going to use this for is just to demonstrate also that we can use our cornering tool. Let's view fit in the window. And see, I've crea I'm creating just a little geometric shape here just by playing with some of these decorative stitches here in the AccuStitch program. And you know, the world is a wide open place for you to experiment with this. This is really a lot of fun. So remember that once we have created this design, you can also play around with the stitch order. This would cause a lot of jumping around and thread changes. So probably what I would do here is I think I would go ahead and start moving my own objects around. I'd grab this green one and take it up here to that green. Probably move this one down. I think I'd, I'd like the greens to stitch first. Move that green up. I think there's another green one down here somewhere. Or I could use the one, two, three tool. So I'm just playing around with reordering them. Let's drag them down to the bottom. What else do I have? These other green ones need to go all the way to the bottom. One, two, three, four triangles. Let's see which one is in which order. It went there, there, this one here, and this one here. That's not bad. So reorder things, you know, if you need to. It's starting down here in the bottom left. Where's my upper one here? I'm gonna move that one up to be the first one. And the reason why is because this was the last one here, so I'd like my machine to not jump quite so much, even if I change the thread color. So there's that. Let's move that one to the bottom. All right, so reorder them if you want to. If you wanted to come back to the Edit tab and use your one, two, three, Remember that this would be the last thing that you were able to do before you wrote this design onto your USB stick. 
the um, order change when you use this doesn't stay as part of the design once you save this design. Okay, so I think I've demonstrated quite a bit about the AccuStitch program. I've talked a little bit about some of the wonderful improvements. Primarily, we've got this Align tool. We've got um, the digital ruler work, which is going to be a lot of fun to work with in the future. We've got more shapes. And it's just so much fun to play with. I'm having a ball. I hope you will, too. So if you don't already have it, I would contact your nearest Janome dealer and purchase the program and start to have some fun playing around with it. And again, remember one thing I did not talk about at all during this little video was that you could come up to your design tab, you could open up an embroidery design and you could then use that design as the basis for creating a frame around it or adding other little decorative motifs into it or whatever you want to do. So once again, this is Fabiola Martinez, and I'm talking about AccuStitch program that's made by Janome, primarily for Janome machines. Or, you know, the thought just occurred to me, you could save this as a Jeff file, and if you have a digitizing program, you could open up that Jeff file, and you could convert it into a stitch format for any other brand of machine you might have. Anyway, that's about all for now, and I thank you very much for watching the video. Bye-bye for now.